Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Burns and in this video, I am going to discuss how I grow my Hoyas. But before I continue, please click the subscribe and notification bell buttons to stay in the loop. So, uh, before you grow any plant, the first thing that you need to consider is the uh, climate in which this uh, plant uh, originally grows. So, you need to know if the uh, plant is adaptable to your location or you can at least simulate the, the uh, climate in those uh, areas. If you, uh, you can do it or if the condition in your area is almost the same, then you can now continue in uh, selecting your Hoya or your plant. So in uh, growing a Hoya, there are two ways to propagate it. The first one is by using seeds. However, uh, seeds is not that uh, available because uh, you need to sow the seeds within a week after it got out from its seed pod. So the most viable option for most of us is uh, using the stem. There are two ways in using the stem. The first one is by using the layering method, uh, which is simply by uh, having a stem here. So, so supposing that uh, this is your Supposing that this is your stem, all you need to do is you need to place the stem to a nearby pot, maybe like this one, and you need to make sure that the stem touches the soil so that the, uh, after some time, maybe two weeks or a month, it will grow roots. And after it will grow roots, you can now cut that uh, stem out from its mother plant and you can have now another plant. So in this case, uh, in this particular pot here, I actually just loop, loop the uh, stem to its own pot. That what actually happened here is that the original roots of this uh, Hoya died and uh, the uh, secondary root is the one that is supplying nutrients to the uh, plant. So when I found out that the original plant. I cut it off from its uh, root and then place it back to the soil and then right now it is actually uh, growing a new new leaves here and this might be a new stem here so right now there are two sources of nutrients for this uh, plant now and I also place a coconut husk here because the stem here is a little elevated from this uh, Pot. So I placed as a coconut husk here so that uh, eventually this stem here will grow roots and after that I can cut off this uh, stem here so that this stem here can now grow to another plant. So that is uh, basically a layering method which is uh, placing a stem to the soil while the stem is still with its mother plant. So. The next uh, method is by using the cutting. So you can, like for example, this uh, oya here, you can cut it off this stem here and then place it to another part. So, the, but how long will your cutting be? So it should be just enough so that the uh, cutting will not fall off from its uh, path. So we can look at this uh, Hoya here. You can see that there are already six uh, leaves here. That is already a very heavy for the uh, Hoya. So you need to place a very long stem under the soil so that the stem can support the weight of these uh, leaves. You need to make sure though that the no part of the petiole or the leaves touches the soil because there is a chance, not all the time, but there is a chance that the petiole and the leaves will rot and then 
your cutting might eventually die so you need to make sure that your cutting is just above the soil and uh, and uh, there are questions in the forums where which way is up and which way, which way is down if, if, if we follow the original growth of the stem the down part should be should be here and the upper part should be here so you just need to look at the direction of the petiole the, the petiole here is going that way so this is this should have been the uh, uh, younger part of the soil uh, the stem and this is the older part but if we follow that the that growth we may plant our hoya upside down so my uh, way of planting the hoya is uh, by following the leaves so if the, if the leaves facing this way the, I'm going to plant this uh, hoya here this way up so that the leaves is facing the sun or the light because if we plant it uh, the other way around we are actually uh, planting the hoya upside down but uh, how long your cutting would be so my suggestion is don't make it too long uh, not longer than one foot because uh, supposing like this one this is a very long segment here so just use one node my requirement in uh, using uh, my requirement in using the uh, cutting is that at least two leaves in one node so you need to have two leaves in one node and uh, supposing that the node here is very close to each other sometimes I place uh, one node under the soil because uh, the roots actually grows faster at the node so if you have a node under the soil it uh, actually makes your cutting grow roots faster than if it's just a stem it is actually very true in uh, the publicalix because I have tried it the, the roots grow very really fast near the node or at the node but in this case in the carnosa uh, it is uh, just the same because uh, uh, the behavior of this carnosa here it grows roots anywhere at the stem and it is way faster but the publicalix uh, is very fast at the node so you need to consider that every kind of hoya uh, have its own uh, behavior and uh, routine. So the earlier question was that how long the uh, stem your cutting would be. So I have I have here a hoya shiari. So this is hoya plus her nazi hoya self species shiari. So I planted this uh, hoya actually with three nodes. So the, this is a top node one, two, three. The fourth one is just uh, below the uh, the soil. So there are three nodes above the soil, and as you can see here, the last node is dead. So that is actually what uh, the hoya will do. Uh, maybe not all the time, but sometimes the hoya will kill the last the upper part of the cutting and will favor the nodes that are nearest to the soil to uh, make it survive so this was planted last August 11 and it is now grown to um, more than just more than one foot so that is uh, and I have actually read somewhere that uh, too much leaves will uh, slow down the growth of the roots of your uh, of any plant so you just need to know uh, what is enough you need to determine it by yourself we, we, I'm going to show you now these two pots here this one here was planted originally with two leaves while this one was uh, with one left so this one uh, I've grown to two leaves now they were planted on the same day but the uh, 
uh, this one here has gone to, to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and there are 8 uh, big leaves and there is uh, 2 new leaves here and it's still growing and they are actually 2 stems so you can see the difference between a 1 leaf and 2 leaves however if you have uh, supposing that you have two nodes and each node have only one left you are not going to choose which one would you have uh, are you going to plant it uh, with the one node to encourage two growth or two nodes with two leaves to encourage faster growth so that will be your bargain there when uh, planting a hoya actually if that is your only cutting I'm going to suggest that you need to plant it with two leaves I have some uh, one leaf cutting there together with this one they were planted on the same day also a pubic corolla like this one which is a Hoya pubic corolla uh, formerly called the uh, pubic calyx black dragon uh, one of those has not grown any left yet so they still have a one old leaf so that is the uh, problem when you are just uh, planting hoya with one left so supposing that you already have your cutting the next question is how are you going to to cutting my uh, favorite way of rooted cutting is still direct to the pot I have tried the water propagation and to tell you there is no difference for me actually direct to the pot is uh, way faster for me compared to uh, doing the water first I have actually placed the uh, carnosa in the public alex of pink silver to the same glass uh, bottle but the uh, what after two weeks the, uh, the carnosa have grown roots so actually about to more than an inch and they are too many of it but the public alex of pink silver has uh, not grown uh, roots at all except for the plug, white dots around its stem and there's a little progress near the node of that uh, pubicalyx so I decided to remove it from the water and place it directly to the pot but I have observed here I have too many uh, uh, newly planted hoyas there with the different varieties it grow uh, I can actually see improvements after two weeks to one month from the soyas that were planted directly to the pot so I still favor the direct to the pot method than anything else I have not tried the lika and I have actually tried the propagation box method but the direct to the pot is still faster compared to direct to the uh, uh, to, compared to the uh, propagation box method. I only use a uh, propagation box when uh, rehabbing a plant or supposing there's a uh, hoya that experience a root rot or dehydration I'm going to cut it off and place it in the propagation box so that the uh, humidity is equal to all parts of that uh, hoya. So we are now going to discuss the uh, pots. Uh, what pot? What kind of pot are you going to use? So this one here. This is the pink dragon. This is just planted last uh, September 20, and it has grown a new growth here. Just just grown, so it is not yet. Uh, Growing. so there is already roots here there are actually roots coming from here so but uh, this part here you can see that uh, the entire bottom of this part is actually uh, the drainage of the pot so this is actually a very good pot because it has a very very good drainage in it. and uh, the top part here the diameter of the top part is 4.75 inches or 12 centimeter so my suggestion for the uh, pot is uh, 
between 5 to 7 inches but I most likely get the 5 inches but oh, yeah, two, oh, 7 inches is quite big to me so that's that's my kind of pot and uh, I'm going to show you this spot here this is a 1.5 liter coke bottle that I uh, divided in half you can see I have some holes here I have four holes here just uh, above the, the bottom part my idea here is just a uh, while while there is no roots yet I'm going to close this cup here so that there is water that will stay there so it, this water here will supply moisture to the soil here so that the uh, soil is uh, continuously be, uh, moist while so while it is still rooting so it will uh, help in rooting the the soya here this is a uh, how uh, hoya darwin eye I actually uh, I actually placed this soya here there are 13 of them at the beginning I placed them in a water in a cup um, and uh, after two weeks the other the other Hoyas have died and the, the four that have that uh, have left I examined the four of them and uh, I saw that those that have a uh, little chance in surviving actually uh, those that have the bowl like leaves uh, touches the water so when I saw that I decided to get all of those remaining four and place it in the, in this uh, pot and I also decided to place the bowl like leaves just under the soil and uh, after two weeks I saw a uh, little progress in the leaves and after about another two weeks the uh, Hoya have uh, uh, grow, grow in it so my suggestion for you if you have the Darwin eye place the bow like leaves just under the soil and it will help your Darwin eye to grow so this is my hook battle oh yeah here I am I am planning to place this uh, oh yeah to a new pot with a uh, trellis on it because uh, it doesn't look good here. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have also a pot there at the other part of the garden that have no holes at the bottom of it. I'm going to show you that one later. I forgot to say earlier that uh, once you have your cutting, once you are still rooting your cutting, you need to place those soya into a shady, shady part. Shady area, no direct sunlight until you can see growth there. So you, you also need to do it when after repotting. So when you repot a hoya, you might have touched the uh, roots. So you need to place your hoya under a shady part, no direct sunlight for uh, maybe at least one week. You just need to make sure that the uh, hoya is already stable uh, before you introduce it to the sun. Um, I am now going to discuss my potting medium so this one here I think at least four years of so four to five years I cast uh, pure clay in it so I only used uh, materials that I can't found that I can't find here in my area this is a rice field area at the back of our house there's a rice field and this area here are bamboos and this uh, uh, clay here is really very sticky uh, when wet and when it dries it dries really hard like a rock so but uh, as you can see here the Hoya still uh, is alive and I have some Hoyas there that uh, actually have grown to too many pedicles and it still looks uh, okay even though it is uh, planted in a pure clay 
the problem with uh, using the soil like this one like a clay is that the amount of soil and uh, in the pot reduce uh, maybe by uh, watering so in in time the soil got reduced you need to to replace the soil so that the uh, roots will not be exposed if the roots got exposed your hoya might die so you need to really repel it so this one here is planted with the uh, it's a new mix of all it this one here was planted with the uh, one part sun two parts clay and then four parts uh, decomposed rice cast the uh, phobicolix here at my back uh, it is already climbing and this jackfruit it is planted in a few uh, coconut husk the advantage of the coconut husk is that it do not hold too much water so uh, my, I had not experienced a root rot in the coconut husk and uh, the disadvantage of, of it is that because it do not uh, hold too much water during dry season we have two seasons here in the Philippines dry season and the wet season during dry season maybe uh, January to June the we need to water your Hoya maybe two times a day because the uh, weather is really hot uh, so you need to do it uh, you need to water it two times a day so this fabricolix here of now uh, there is one bud here and uh, actually sometimes uh, the flower uh, almost at the same time but right now this is the bud and there's another bud there that is a little younger than this one so this uh, will uh, flower uh, earlier compared to that one I think this one have four pedancles in it. So the difference between the carnosa and the pubicalyx in ter in terms of flowers is that the the pubicalyx uh, have fewer uh, flowers in it compared to the carnosa. So I have some carnosa. Most of my carnosa there have around 20 pedancles. Uh, my pubicalyx. I have already um, just a maximum of five pedicles, so that's the really big difference in there. But the pubicolix here uh, immediately flowers after the uh, flower wilted. But the carnosa, if you want to flower it at this time of the year, you need to fertilize it. The next question in the forum is: uh, When to water your hoya? That is a very difficult question because uh, it has to be determined by the gardener. So, it's a, for example, here in this part here, this is a very shy, sunny area. So, I need to water this part here sometimes uh, once a day. While that area there uh, may need watering once a week. So, you, you need to determine it by looking at the soil. Uh, how how dry your soil is so last a uh, few days ago it has rained so I have not actually watered this area here for about three days now and the, the soil is still moist so I, I don't need to water it yet today but uh, when I water supposing that this uh, part here needs water and this still this part here is still a little moist I still water every plant that is nearby my area that I am watering. So there are those who say that uh, you need to dehydrate your hoya. I don't follow that idea. So I, I water my plant when I feel like watering it. So even if it is still wet, if I feel like I need, I want to water it, I water it. So it doesn't really matter. And uh, also the uh, fertilizer. I've used the triple 14 on my fertilizer the cheap one the, the one that are being used in the uh, rice film so I don't use the Osmo coat I don't have the money to buy it uh, it's quite expensive for me but uh, the uh, problem that I have here is that uh, sometimes when I place my fertilizer it immediately rain and uh, I guess the uh, fertilizer got drained out from the pot and 
the uh, Hoya did not uh, flower as I was supposed to expect but uh, when I do fertilize it I fertilize it usually in the afternoon after the Sun got uh, uh, a little mellow uh, I water in the afternoon so maybe around 5 p.m. and uh, if it doesn't rain I normally uh, see some progress within two weeks and the flower will grow I'm going to discuss you now the problems that I have encountered the, here while growing my Hoyas so uh, in this uh, Hoya here uh, uh, there is a dead uh, stem here so uh, it is really too late when I uh, realize the stem is dead so normally it uh, will begin the dead from this part here and uh, I really don't know how it happened but sometimes uh, though it happens when you force the stem for a certain direction and uh, I noticed that uh, when we do that some when I do that sometimes the stem that died but in this case because I really don't do anything on, on this stem I don't know why you know, this stem died and another problem also here is that this uh, stem here uh, experience a root rot and root rot usually uh, happens when uh, the uh, the uh, cutting medium got uh, too wet or the uh, drainage is not enough it did not uh, drain the water so it got rot rot uh, when uh, what I saw the, there well, one time when I took out the roots that uh, there are white uh, mites in the uh, roots it looks like aphids uh, but it's really really small it is not uh, always that way but uh, in one time uh, there are some white mites at the roots so you need to replace the soil if that happens and you need to take out the uh, <coughs> dead part so sometimes uh, it will go out uh, at the stem it will take out uh, all of the roots and when that happens uh, it is much better to replant your uh, do cuttings and replant your hoya but if you don't like that option if you want your hoya to be really long if you insist on a really long stem still you need to use the propagation box and uh, place the hoya inside the box and uh, just mess it so that the uh, humidity is uh, equal on all parts of the uh, box and it may take about a month to for that hoya to recover but uh, how are you going to identify if it, is, it has a root rot. So the symptoms uh, normally it does uh, the leaves get yellow. So when you see the when you see yellow leaves uh, you need to examine it if the leaves is still strong then it's okay. But uh, if the leaves are weak then the uh, nutrients are, is not going at the uh, stem. So it, if, if the leaves is yellow, it might be just it, it might be just sun stress. We need to examine that also. But I think uh, mostly it is just sun stress if the leaves are still strong. So that is the uh, problem in the rot rot. Another prob problem here is that the, because I use soil in most of my pots, after about some one year or two years, the soil uh, got reduced so you need to refill the soil or repot the hoya so that it will not die if the uh, roots are exposed your hoya might die and other problems are uh, fungus uh, it doesn't kill the hoya so I have not really done that well but uh, I have a bungee side there. I have not yet uh, used it, so I might use it on some of the hoya. Because the leaves, uh, the coloration of the leaves is really affected. So, for those who are very, uh, who don't like, who like their leaves very shiny, 
uh, you really need to use the fungicide there. Uh, the I also have some aphids. The orange aphids actually just affects the new growth, and it doesn't uh, do any damage uh, to my hoya. So uh, I don't mind that much. The most destructive uh, problem that I have encountered here is the one that I encountered in my Incrosata cuttings. I bought the cuttings of Incrosata and I divided it into three uh, parts, three single node cuttings. And uh, after about uh, two weeks uh, on me, when two weeks to one month, there, uh, there are already gro growth of uh, some, lim some leaves. And I saw that there, there are ring-like yellowing in the older leaves. And then the yellowing spread, and then it turns to brown, and then the leaves uh, fell off. And then the uh, symptoms uh, transferred to the next leaves. So I, it got more worried. I removed all the affected leaves, and then transferred the three parts of Incrosata to a location where they are alone to isolate them from the other plants. And then it got okay for about a month, but but the symptoms reoccurred, so I decided to remove all the leaves and then the Incrosata died. But uh, that was the risk I took because I cannot risk the, my all more than 400 pots here for three pots of Incrosata. So right now I no longer have the Incrosata which is uh, really very disappointing because the Incrosata have really have that really beautiful yellow yellow flower. So I might get another Incrosata in the future but right now uh, I no longer have it. And uh, another thing here, in this part the problem here is the sun. So I can see here that this uh, Carnosa here have some yellowing in it. Although this uh, Carnosa looks okay, you can see still that this is uh, there are some sun stress leaves here. I place this Carnosa here you know, just when the two weeks rain uh, started. There was a typhoon uh, from the uh, east side of the country so I know that, that there will be a rain for about two weeks so I transferred the Carnosa here uh, thinking that it might acclimatize before the rain uh, stops but uh, two days after the I uh, transferred here it got some the silly wing so uh, I don't know why it happened because uh, there, there was a very scarce uh, sunshine during those times and the clouds are really, uh, really give a big shade in this uh, uh, part here. So uh, maybe because uh, even if it, if it's in the uh, shade, uh, if it, even if it was raining and it, your hoya is not uh, on the shade, it will still experience uh, sun stress. So that is uh, something that I cannot really figure out uh, for the moment. I was supposed to take a picture of this uh, Pimentiliana here because uh, days ago this Pimentiliana have some orange aphids in it but uh, right now I don't know where the aphids goes so that is one uh, uh, fruit here that the aphids really do not uh, kill the Hoya oh, yeah. uh, they only affect the new growth here there are some markings still but you can see there are some black uh, markings here but the aphids uh, already went away I don't know where they go this one is the Cominjana uh, that uh, flowered a month ago it was this long when it flowered the pitong coal was here in this part here uh, just a month after I planted it and uh, it is now a very long coming jana and uh, really loves the sun. This one here is the crossy cowlis. When it arrived to me, it was really a uh, stress. So it took about three months, three months, uh, two months, I think, 
because this was planted August 3 so today is October 13 two months so it took almost uh, more than a month for it to be to have recovered because uh, the leaves was really very very yellow when it arrived and uh, the new growth here the, the new growth here from I'm going to transfer this uh, tripod now okay here it is so the new growth here actually is just around two weeks old so after it had recovered it uh, grow really fast so that, that these are my crossy colors there are four left uh, I think I planted around uh, 13 I think 13 or I'm not sure 13 or 7 I'm not sure which but uh, uh, I only have four left so these are my other Hoyas here in this garden okay I'm going to show you now my pot with no holes at the bottom so this one here have no holes at the bottom you can see here that the uh, lowest hole is about two inches from the bottom of this pot my reason for using this kind of uh, holes that uh, this pot here was placed uh, very near to the trunk so it is attached to the trunk and the rain cannot penetrate at this uh, part of the uh, uh, part of the uh, area here so you can also see that the hole at the part of, top part of this uh, not very accessible to rainwater but this uh, Hoya here is uh, around four years old and you, know, you can see that the base stem here is almost as big as the size of a pencil so I have no problem with this Hoya the Hoya is actually climbing that above this uh, mango tree and it has around five pedancles there and those uh, pedancles are continuously flowering so uh, when the uh, flower wilted, it immediately makes another flower. <coughs> and this uh, oh yeah, here, you can see that this uh, pot here was has also holes at the sides. Uh, my idea here is almost the same as this one. However, I realized later that because this uh, the padding medium here is a decomposed right has. Uh, it retains too much water so I decided to open the holes at the bottom there were no holes at the bottom uh, originally there are provisions for holes but it was not open so I opened it to increase the drainage of this pot and this is the third oensis that was uh, planted there at the sunnier area of my garden but uh, when my neighbor cut down the trees uh, it got too much sun and this uh, becomes yellow but uh, I think I plan I transferred here about uh, two weeks now and the leaves have now recovered so um, I, I uh, received this Hoya June 30 today is October 13 so it has now grown to more than two feet when I when it arrives to me, it has four leaves and just around here. So from the time uh, it had gone to uh, al almost a uh, uh, more than two feet. This soya here is a carnosa, one of my biggest carnosa here. I think this is also around three to four years old, and it has more than twenty pedicles. They are wasp residing in the uh, stem of this carnosa uh, there are six wasps here right now I saw that the wasp is actually like the uh, the uh, Hoya I have seen them in several of my Hoyas sometimes when I transfer the Hoya the wasp uh, get out of that uh, hive but be transferred to another Hoya I don't know why they prefer the Hoya Maybe there are some bugs here that we like. I don't know. Sometimes there are mantises here also. I do not uh, remove them. I believe that they are actually helping the Hoya and they are eating bugs that are very uh, uh, destructive to the Hoya. I'm going to show you now this uh, Crimson Queen here. 
this Crimson Queen was also placed in that sunnier area earlier. It has been there for two months. Uh, this was also planted last uh, June 30. I got it as a cutting. So I divided the cutting to a single node. And uh, I transferred it here because as you can see, there are some black spots here after it got sunnier there. And also the green part here have become yellow. So I got it got me worried so I transferred it here. Hoping that uh, it will improve, but I have no, I cannot see any improvement as of this moment. In that part there, it actually grew to two nodes, three nodes actually, but they had about two inches long. But uh, since the it got senior, there's no improvement since then. So I'm hoping that the shade here can revive the zoya. This was the area where I placed my uh, Hoya Suragawensis and also the uh, Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. So uh, it used to have an 8, uh, 8 to 11 sunshine, but when my neighbor cut down the trees, uh, it got the sunshine all day long. And uh, especially the uh, 11 to 3 p.m. sunshine is really, really bad. So the Surgar Insist was uh, placed there and the Crimson Queen was uh, somewhere here. Right now, this uh, that was the, uh, that is the uh, Mendorensis, Soya Mendorensis, pink orange, also that one. That one is uh, Hoya Gulam Koyana. And that orange spot there is the Pubu Corolla. Also, there are some uh, Parnassa there. So, uh, I have read uh, somewhere in the uh, forum that the uh, thicker leaves uh, oh yes, are uh, more resistant to the sun. But my thickest le leaves here is the actually the Sorogoyensis, and uh, it, it did not. Uh, uh, it was not resistant. It was not as resistant as the other Hoyas here. Uh, that idea was not actually true. Actually, the uh, most resistant to the sun is the uh, uh, Hoya Hoya Kominjana there. It really loves the sun. So, if you have the Kominjana, place it in the direct sun. Even at non time sun, the, uh, the Kominjana will love it and it will actually grow flower faster if you place it directly under the sun. I also have some uh, Chrysocallis there. But uh, this that part there was a little shaded by the fence uh, after uh, after 2 p.m. So there is actually less uh, sun in that area of the Chrysocallis. So when my neighbor Cut down the trees there. He placed a fence here, so I, I I make use of the fence as my new hanging area for my pots, and uh, I think I have it uh, over a hundred uh, new hoyas there. Mostly of my my, oh, actually all of them are newly acquired hoya. All of the hoyas in that fence. So the Karsi Kaolis, the Pimentuliana, uh, Berlia Lata are all there. The Shari and the... Uh, yeah, there are lots of Hoya, new acquired Hoya in that fence. I'm going to show you now this Hoya here. This is this is still a Carnosa. So I planted this Hoya here so that it will uh, live like it was in the world. So I only placed the coconut husk here just for a little support and to thinking that the water will be a trap here the problem with this kind of setup is that during dry season especially during February to June the soya got dehydrated so that is uh, one thing that you need to consider when growing a hoya like it is in the wild 
so because uh, we always think that this is an epiphyte plant so we need to do just clean on the trees but the one thing that you need to consider is that the location where these uh, plants are growing in the wild you need to consider that uh, mostly the soils live in a high humidity area and they can actually get water from the air itself and also there are moose in the trees and that tree the trunk of the tree uh, do not dry as dry as we have here in the lowlands so and those that are in the wild gets water from the moose and from the crevices of the trees and from the humidity itself so that is why that those are the things that you need to consider if you really think of growing hoyas like it is in the wild so I'm going to discuss now uh, how to make your hoya carnosa flower so as you can see here uh, you need to look at the leaves you can see here the leaves here is very very dark green you cannot actually see the veins in this uh, left leaves here because the the leaves is almost as dark as the veins so that is how dark green these leaves are it means the hoya is asking for sunlight so I have not seen a hoya with this kind of green that uh, actually flowers it, it might grow a peduncle but that peduncle you know, will not uh, transform into a full bloom flower so that is one thing that you need to do I'm going to show you the other hoyas there so that you know, we are going to compare the leaves of the toy okay I'm going to show you now this uh, Carnosa here This one has two shades of green. This one is a yellower shades of green It means that this uh, leaves here uh, have exper is experiencing uh, sun stress So you don't like you don't need this kind of green What you need is this kind of green so this uh, green here is a little paler, paler compared to that one. You can now see the uh, veins of these uh, leaves here. This is a new stem. It's a new stem here, and this stem has actually four new peduncles, and this will surely flower in two months. So this this is the kind of green that you need when you want your uh, Arnasa to flower. So the sun here is between uh, morning until 11 a.m. So actually the neighbor of this area here, this one, has two new stems and uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it has two new stems and each stem has four new pattern calls. So this uh, neighbor Hoya here have eight new pattern calls. This is the Pabicalix here. And you can see that uh, this one here have two new buds. Uh, they will not have flower simultaneously. This is the Pabicalix. And, uh, Uh, it immediately made a uh, pot after the flower wilted. So the demands the uh, demands the sun demands of the carnasa and the public olex is almost the same. So you can place them uh, side by side and they will flower just the same. And this one here, you cannot see it, see it in the frame, but. Uh, it just grown this stem here because I just uh, transferred this very big cubicolix here from that shady area to this here and uh, it immediately grown a new stem 
so it means that it will eventually make a new flower here. It had not flowered at that shady area there. Uh, it had some pedancles, but uh, I think it is still waiting for this uh, new stem here. Also, you need also to consider the the leaves of your hoya. You don't trim it. Uh, the Hoya needs enough leaves to make it flower, so if you are trimming your Hoya often, it will not flower. So you, if you want your Hoya to flower, don't uh, trim it. Um, so, you see here this one have number 15 on it, so it had, it had uh, 15 pedancles plus this 4 here, it will have 19 pedancles now. So you can just imagine uh, if that 19 pedancles will, uh, will uh, bloom at the same time. So, so that's the, uh, what you need when growing a Hoya. So you need to have it uh, a correct, correct sun is very very important. So if you really want it to make a cloud, correct sun is very important. You need to research on that and the location of the Hoya, you also need to research in that it differs from location to location so uh, some of you are living in the US uh, you have a different sunlight to compared to us here and also even in the US the sun, I don't think the sun is uh, the same all throughout the entire territory of the US so you need to also to research in that uh, uh, how, how good is the sun in your location so uh, that is my discussion of my uh, how I grow my Hoyas thank you for watching please uh, don't forget to click the subscribe and notification bell uh, to help my channel grow